Spoilers! If you haven't seen the first episode of Prehistoric Planet and care about being spoiled about the inclusion of some critters, stay away from this video till you've seen it. This video was made by using my own knowledge, scientific papers, as well as the words of the people involved with the show itself. This is in no way meant to provide undue criticism towards the hard work that went into the show. In fact, there are very little instances where it may come off as me saying that something is wrong. As I am not an expert on every single group of animals, living or extinct, I used the words of other experts that may know the given organism better than I. Many criticisms are merely nitpicking and do not affect the quality of the overall show, and many are also debatable. I used the words provided by lead paleontological consultant Dr. Darren Nash via his Twitter threads discussing the designs and design philosophy of all the animals in Prehistoric Planet to construct a more fleshed out scientific discussion than the show provides. Obviously, the show is meant to be more visual and myth-breaking or trope-busting than purely informational or educational. It does deliver a good amount of scientific information, but only that which is absolutely needed in the context of the scene or episode. I think a lot of people wanted more thorough explanations of why some animals were reconstructed the way they were, especially considering how strongly updated they are with speculative but scientifically rooted displays, behaviors, and tissues because of the stranglehold the 80s and 90s nostalgia-fueled outdated reconstructions have on most dinosaur-related media. So, please take all this into consideration when watching my scientific reviews of Prehistoric Planet. I was not aware of any information that may come out after the writing, recording, editing, or publication of these videos that may counter any issues I bring up with the dinosaurs of Prehistoric Planet. As of the writing of this preamble, no full-length documentaries or discussion of the behind-the-scenes work on the series has come out. Some rather short tidbits on the location filming, philosophy, and computer animation work have been released, but this does not entail the full breadth of the project. Pycnodonts Design a funny little fish is name-dropped as a pycnodont as it swims into the mouth of the mosasaurs to eat some leftover schmutz. This was a huge order of bony fish which first appeared in the early Triassic and lasted till the Eocene and on every continent except Australia and Antarctica. They are known for their bodies that were flattened from the sides and their hide which was covered in bony armor. They had jaws adapted to crush hard-shelled prey and the pavement-like teeth to do it. This particular fish is left as a generic pycnodont, but the team modeled it after Scalacurvicthes. This genus comes from Cenomenian rocks, so about 30 to 40 million years before this series. They made it as a hypothetical continuation of the lineage that lasted into the latest Cretaceous. Just so happens one species of Scalacurvicthes was named after Dr. Darren Nash. All in all, it matches everything that is known of these fish. Thanks to their nearly complete remains, not much can be left to the imagination. Behavior The little fishy swims on in to the mosasaur's mouth to do some complimentary cleaning service. Yeah, that's not from direct fossil evidence, but inferred behavior from too many modern fish to count. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester. Music